Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar on DuckSoup Turbo and Pipedrive integration. Today here with you we have this webinar's host Giles Garnett, the Head of Professional Services and on the live chat uh, Jen Kuzmanskaita, the Head of Customer Service. At the end of the webinar as usual we will have a Q&A with Giles. So thank you so much for joining us today and let's start our webinar. Uh, thank you, Jin, and uh, hello and good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you wherever you may be in the world, and thank you for joining us in our latest of the series of our DuckSoup webinars. As Jin just said, my name is Giles, I'm Head of uh, Professional Services here at DuckSoup, and uh, you've just heard from Jin, who's our Head of Customer Support, and I've been presenting these uh, webinars for the last three years or so, and so hopefully we'll bring you some, uh, some first-hand experience from the world of DuckSoup and LinkedIn. Today we are going to we go. Today we're going to have a look at one of our direct CRM integrations and demonstrate the possibilities that this gives you in your lead generation activities when using LinkedIn and DuckSoup. I'm going to walk you through how to use, how to install what we call the Pipedrive connector and what our options you have regarding your data and what they mean and how they can really, how, how when you use them properly can really harness the power of the functionality in your lead generation activities. As this is one, as this this webinar is talking about the CRM integration, um, everything today is focused on DuckSoup Turbo. So be aware, in order to make use of all this functionality, you need DuckSoup Turbo. Um, if you're a new user and you're freshly installing DuckSoup, you get a two-week free uh, Turbo trial when you uh, first install it. So you can always have a play with the uh, with the with the software, all the bells and whistles out activated for the first 14 days. So. Um, uh, just please bear that in mind. And while I'm talking and presenting, please raise any questions you have via the questions box, uh, and Jim will do her best to answer those that are applicable. Um, any that are appropriate, I'll also try and cover at the end of the webinar. So please do try and keep your questions on topic for the assistance of everybody. If you've got further questions, you can always contact our support team and the email address will come up towards the end. And I know the question is probably already being raised. Yes, the webinar is being recorded and will be made available to you in the coming hours if you registered and via our website and YouTube channel uh, in the next day or two. So I always do this. It's the one slider at the beginning, just in case there's anybody new. What is DuckSoup? It's a Chrome extension helps you automate your lead generation activities in LinkedIn. Works by mimicking the human behavior um, on the platform and gives you the possibility to harness the power of LinkedIn by automating such actions as visiting profiles, sending connection requests, sending in mails, and even endorsing skills. And if you've got the Turbo Edition, you have possibilities available where you can build, edit, and track your campaigns, enroll your prospects into campaigns, and integrate into other platforms. We won't spend too much time on that today because uh, I think we've got the advanced users, the Turbo users who are already quite familiar with the platform, hopefully. So, on to the main topic of today, that's the Pipedrive integration. Well, what is Pipedrive and why have we built an integration? Well, Pipedrive was, was established around 12 years ago and has uh, rapidly grown to become one of the most popular and familiar CRMs available. It's been uh, very widely adopted, as you can see from this information here. So um, over 90,000 organizations in there, it's used in more than 170 countries, and there's more than 10,000, oh, sorry, more than 100,000 uh, users active on the platform. Um, it's quite a vast, user base and and personally i found pipedrive to be fairly simple and intuitive to use and, and pretty straightforward I've, I've had a play around with quite a lot of different crms and i find pipedrive one of the more intuitive should we say um oh don't go the wrong way there we go so with pipedrive and duck soup how do you get that um connection to work and we'll walk through uh, all of this uh, in the demo that I do as well. But just to give you a, a flavor here, first of all, you need to install the connector. So from within the dark stash, you then go to the CRM connections and you, you install the connector. When you first do the installation, it's really important that you need administrator access to your pipe drive uh, environment. And that's because DuckSoup creates some new fields within pipe drive, which it populates, of course, as it does that data exchange between the various systems. So you can see some of the the um the fields that it import that it creates here so such things as the the title that comes out of linkedin the id the linkedin id the the url of the profile uh, location industry whether it's a first second or third degree and then it also brings across DuckSoup tags and DuckSoup notes if you use those as well there are other pipe 
uh, other pipe drive fields that get populated by DuckSoup as well, such as the name and the organization of the uh, of the uh, prospects that you are using. So when you've installed the, um, the connector, uh, you then have some options to decide which prospects you want to actually appear in Pipedrive. Now in these screenshots, it's currently turned off, but you can see here, you have a number of options here. So you can, you can if we work from the top, you can select do not create and update people from profile view. So you're viewing profiles and they won't appear in, in Pipedrive. You could create and update people from your connected profile. So it would only create um, people within Pipedrive if that person that you viewed in LinkedIn is a first degree connection. You can also create and update people from tagged profiles. So you can have a, um, you can specify tags there where you can say, yeah, if they've got such and such a tag, then import them. And you can also have create and update people from all profiles. So any profile that you view in LinkedIn would then be imported into Pipedrive. So that's from the drop down list there. You've also got three additional options here where you can actually have activities created for inbound LinkedIn messages. You can have activities created within Pipedrive for new LinkedIn connections. So somebody becoming a first degree connection creates an activity. And then even you can also have DuckSoup automatically carry out a visit to somebody once they become a first degree connection. So when their chase status changes from being a second or third degree connection to being a first degree connection, you then want to trigger probably an auto visit to their profile because the data that you see when a prospect is a second or third degree connection is different to when they become a first degree connection that's when they become more interesting you can see more contact details and those sorts of things so we will walk through all of this when i do the demo as well and show you exactly how this all looks uh, in the system because of the way that the um, uh, integration works you can now trigger actions from within Pipedrive, as long as you've got um, the LinkedIn URL, once that's populated, that opens up a whole raft of possibilities here. And you can create your campaigns in DuckSoup. So you can see here my drip campaign screen, hopefully that's familiar to some of you, um, where you create your campaigns. And then you can then trigger an enrollment into a campaign from within Pipedrive. So you've got a drop down menu and you see you've got these three options, enroll, send a message or a connection request. That can all then be done either individually within against each contact that you have in Pipedrive, or indeed you can select multiple uh, contacts and bulk enroll, bulk message, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the sorts of possibilities that it opens up to you. Um, yeah, other actions and tips. So, so just here are a couple of things that you can do. Yeah, so you can message your pro prospects directly from Pipedrive and that would come out as a LinkedIn message. So you can still use, if, if you're familiar with the placeholder, so underscore FN underscore, for example, that first name, you can use that in your messaging because what we're doing is basically creating, without getting too much into the technical, we're basically creating a remote control command that DuckSoup then executes in LinkedIn for you. You can send a connection request as well if it's a second or third degree connection within uh, within the pipe drive environment. This next this this third one here, I toyed about how to explain this, but when you when you first enable the integration, um, if you're starting from a completely clean CRM environment, then that's great because you then you're clean, starting with clean data. There's a few users that I've spoken to who've got a well populated CRM already. And then there's probably some sort of a data alignment or merging process that you'll have to go through as your as the first batches of your prospects come out of LinkedIn, because you may see some duplicates or they'll look like duplicates because DuckSoup is looking in a certain way to match up with uh, with prospects within your contacts within your CRM. So here there's a little bit of um, data cleansing to do in the first instances when you first enable it, if you've got a well-populated CRM database already. And then once you've got it all aligned, then you really does open up the possibilities going forward. It's just a word of uh, caution there. Just, yeah, it's worth that work, that little bit of effort up front to make sure that you have all of that data aligned correctly um, and making the most of it there. So if I now go on to uh, the demo, let's come out of here now very quickly um, for anybody who's new to these webinars please feel free to send me a connection request I'm always happy to to, to connect with um, 
with duct tape users or people with an interest in lead generation activities and uh, and growth hacking so please feel free to, to send me a connection request this is me on linkedin um very happy to interact with users via that platform um so here within linkedin uh, what i want to do now is show you how to install the connector so if i now go to my um duck soup icon here in the top right hand corner i go down to my ducks dash that opens up opens up the uh, the ducks dashboard which hopefully will now there we go and over on the left hand side because i'm a turbo user here i have the crm connections option here and i go go into the crm connection and this is where i have the opportunity to add my pipe drive account now i've already got my pipe i'm already logged on to my pipe drive account so if i now click on add pipe drive account what we should see now is hopefully it'll take me straight to my pipe drive uh, account here there's there i am logged in and this is the duck soup connector which i can now just press install there we go and what we'll see here now we'll see the uh the app requires administrate administrator account um in order to allow those new fields to be connected once it's set up and those fields have been uh, created um then you can go back revert back to being a regular user or non non administrator user um it's just something that needs to be there in that first instance in order to create those new fields for you so i'm going to allow and install there we go and now it installs the app and now it takes me to this this screen here which we saw the screenshot of earlier what i'm going to do then is enable that um there we go and what i've asked it to do here is to create and update people from connected profiles so if i visit a first degree connection then um, it will automatically uh, put that person into my CRM. Um, it's going to let me know if there's a, a, an inbound LinkedIn message against connections, against contact that's already in PipeDrive. If they're not already in PipeDrive, then there's nowhere for the message to go against. If I get a new LinkedIn connection, it's going to notify me under my uh, activities. And it's also, if somebody becomes a, a first degree connection, it's going to trigger an auto visit to their profile there. So those are the options that I've got enabled. As I said earlier, you do have these other options here to turn it off or, or have everything enabled. Um, for example, yeah, if, if you have the tag, they, tagged profiles, you can actually specify which tags you want to have enabled. Uh, it wants to recognize as you visit those people. So that's how I've turned on my, uh, my CRM connection there. And now if I go to PipeDrive, let's, uh, let's just go into PipeDrive now. I go log in hopefully it'll take me straight there there we go now I did some uh, some testing earlier just to uh, to have some data in here so that we had something to show you uh, live and if I go over to the left hand side here and I look at my contacts what we can see here now is that um, I've shrunk the uh, the uh, the cells a little bit here so not to give away too much uh, data of individuals but you can see here that I've actually sorted this by update time so how recently people have had their information updated here. So you can see here, these, these people here um, have had their information updated and these are all first degree connections. So you see here, LinkedIn degree, I've just changed the columns that I can see here so I can see that these have all come from LinkedIn. They've all got a LinkedIn ID and I've got a few of them who have had messages from, so that's why I've got a next action uh, activity date there. Um, and I can see that I'm the owner of all these people. Now, because this is a CRM and I share it with uh, my, my colleagues, there are cases, for example, where um, message exchanges will happen as well. And the great thing about it being a CRM is I can then see those message exchanges with my colleagues. So if I think if I take one of these as an example, let's have a look here. We look at the notes here. So I can see here there's been some exchanges with myself and this individual, and then also with my colleague as well. So here we can see the LinkedIn exchanges here that are happening on the right hand side um, and if we go back to my contacts a second all of those incoming messages because DuckSoup is checking periodically for those incoming messages they are appearing here in my activity log as well in my activity uh, task list if you like so here um, these are information these are these are messages that have been coming in um, from LinkedIn and as I go through this I can yeah I could uh, for example um, mark them all as done or open them and, and, and carry out my, add my chosen next activity. But as I mark these as done, then you see they get cleared from my list here. Um, these are some old ones from, oh, don't want to schedule another activity. Nope, there we go. 
There we are, we'll get rid of that one. So here you get to see who the me who, who the message is, what the message is, who it's come from, when the due date is, so basically when it's come on, come in based upon my criteria, how I've set that all up. Uh, so all of that in all of these messages here appear against those contacts in pipe drive and i can then follow them up accordingly and manage effectively manage my mailbox my linkedin mailbox from within pipe drive um the other thing i can do and then this is this is where we uh, we can talk about um the real nitty-gritty of the uh, the integration if we now jump back a little step and say right we've got a new maybe we've got a new campaign that we want to build for our maybe for our first degree connections because i'm only got first degree connections in my um in my, predominantly first degree connections here in my um, uh, CRM. Um, if I go to my, my duck soup icon and I go back to my ducks dash here, and I'm just going to very quickly create a new um, a new campaign. So if I go to my drip campaigns, um, let's go to the end and let's just hit new campaign here. Um, just a test. I'm going to create a, a campaign here uh, for first degree contact. There we go. Now, because these are first degree contacts, I don't need to send a connection request to them. What I'm going to ask DuckSoup to do is one hour after after I've enrolled them, I would like them to get this message. And I can do here, hi, underscore FN, underscore. And I really cannot type today. There we go. Hi. There we go. Um, just a quick message. Ah, from the webinar. There we go. And then maybe I want to have a, a second message as well, which goes a week later. I underscore FN underscore. Just, um, oh dear. Yeah, <laughs> one of those days. Coordination. There we go. Just another message. So there, I've got two messages here, which I could now, um, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just increase that up to a couple of hours just so we've. Uh, now I'm going to save that. So I've now here, I've got my just a test um, uh, campaign um, and I've got that enabled here. So it's on. Um, I've got a message to go out after three hours and then six days later, um, another message or six days after enrolling them, another message. So what I can do now is if I want to put people into this campaign, I can do that from within my CRM. So here we are, we've got first degree contacts. So we'll go back to our We'll close that down and we'll go back to our uh, our people list here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select. A, uh, well, there's two ways of doing this, actually. So so the first way I could do is I could just go to a profile like this and I could go to the drop down box here in the top right hand corner and click enrolling campaign. That's that's one way of doing it. The alternative way of doing it is to actually select. Multiple. People. Um, now I'm just going to randomly select a group of people here and I will delete these. I won't actually send these messages, but here you can see I've got nine people I've selected and I'm going to go up here. And I'm going to say, right, I want to enroll these people into my, my new campaign. If I cl click enroll into campaign here from this drop down box here, I can go down to my, um, my bottom one there, which is just a test the campaign that I just created. If I now press okay there, those people will now get enrolled into that campaign. Now you see there, nine profile enrollments have been have been queued. I go back to my ducks dash and I look at my queued activity. I think I've got a bunch of auto visits also queued up here. But if I go to the very end of this list, what we'll see here, there we go. There's uh, the the handful of people there, the enrollments there, which will happen as and when my auto visits, which I queued up earlier, have been completed. Um, the reason I've got all of those auto visits queued up is because of um, uh, it's now updating all of my first degree connections with uh, with the latest details. So uh, um, I'd had this turned off for a while. So that's why there's a bunch of uh, those. What we could do is we could um, possibly delete some of those. And uh, yeah, maybe towards the end of the webinar, we'll actually see it get to uh, some of those enrollment activities, which would be quite good. Um, let's increase the list and let's... Yeah, 150. Let's get rid of those because I don't really want those to happen. Go. There we go. And now if I um, look at the first 30, there we go. Let's get rid of those. 
and then we just should have the enrollment sitting there ready to be uh, executed and we should see them happen very shortly now what happens then in, in in the background there we are see so we can see that this guy here has been enrolled and we can see that in three hours time that's been enrolled into um into that particular campaign and there's my message there's message one there queued up to go in yeah in a few hours time and then in six days time that message is queued up so we can now see all of those uh, those people that i've enrolled into that campaign having those messages queued up accordingly and that's all been done here from directly within um within pipe drive um so that that gives you those possibilities there as well you can also of course directly message people from within pipe drive and if you wanted to directly message people you could click on them select them send a message and then here similarly to before you could send a direct message and that would again be sent in linkedin it's triggering all of these activities from within linkedin to happen uh, dynamically across the systems but the great thing is the really good thing is is these 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 actis, this activity log here being able to manage those incoming messages and then decide what you want to do from there and if you need to send somebody a direct message you can do it all from within your crm rather than having to jump back out go to linkedin find their profile etc cetera, etc cetera. so the important details when you're thinking about merging your data um, across uh, if you've got existing data in your in your uh, in your CRM already if we just go to um, um, my colleagues uh, profile here the important thing here is that you've got this LinkedIn profile URL populated if that's populated there then you can trigger those activities from within within the CRM if the LinkedIn profile cell is not populated with a valid URL and it, or incorrect URL, if it's not got the correct URL there, you cannot trigger those remote activities from within the CRM. So that's the important thing to think about, especially if you're merging data and trying to get all of your data together. Now, what I did earlier in order to bring a lot of these people across into my CRM, I thought, right, well, there's an easy way to, to do that. I can just go to a, a list of my first degree connections here. Um, and I can go to my my sent uh, items here. There we go. No, I didn't need to go that. What am I doing? I need to go to my network. Ah, what am I doing? Uh, I go to my network and I go to my first degree connections. And what I could do here is just, for example, say, right, go and auto visit these profiles, and then with the with the with the settings that I've got enabled, DuckSoup will automatically every time it opens one of these profiles, it'll put these details into uh, the CRM. So that way I can sort of bring all of my contacts from the CRM, uh, for contacts from LinkedIn into the CRM and make sure that I've got all of my data in one place, consistent and, and present there. Um, if we just go back to the slides a second, do, 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 do. let's go back to the slideshow. So we talked about how to install the connector. You need administrator rights. The new fields that can be populated within that need to be created within pipe drive and, and the other ones that are auto populated um, you choose your options and this is really important for understanding your process which profiles do you want to have in your crm some people want everyone in there some people want every profile they visit in in their crm because they'd rather have the data some people are a bit more choosy and want to narrow things down and, and want to be able to have a little bit more order so they only want their first degree connections or people that they tagged in there um, you set up your campaigns and then you can enroll people into your campaigns etc etc so that's how you can really harness the power of it so as a summary duck soup and pipe drive can help you streamline your gene lead gen activities by having everything in one place you can share data across your team because i can see who my work colleagues are connected to now i can send them a connection request for example or even indeed see the message exchanges there so that we are all on the same page within the crm and that's a really powerful thing to be able to, to, to do. The most important thing, though, is having a clear process and understanding of which data and which prospects you want in your CRM. So that's what I wanted to show you today. I'm just conscious of time as well. Um, in two weeks time, so on the wow, 6th of September. Wow. When did it become nearly September? Um, DuckSoup, which uh, LinkedIn automation with DuckSoup, which is the right plan for you? So we'll be looking at uh, the starter, the pro and the turbo editions, and just going through the, the functionality and the benefits of each of those so that people can get a really clear understanding as to 
what they should, what is most appropriate for them. And I think it's now time to move on to uh, to questions. Jin, do we have any questions? Yes, we have a couple. Um, they're quite simple. Um, for example, uh, one of the users is asking which pipe drive uh, plan do you require for DexSoup integration? Um, I believe it works on all levels of pipe drive, but we'll double check that for you. Um, yeah, because yeah, as far as I'm aware, I only have I only have the very basic uh, subscription here, but we need to if we can double check that, Jim. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, because yeah, we we I believe I've only got the basic version there. Um, yeah, I've got the administrator rights, of course, to that account. But uh, yeah, um, I believe it's just the, the, the I think the lowest paid version is is the minimum required. Um, so it doesn't work on, on the, the free version if, if, if there's a, a trial version, a free trial version, for example, but if, if there's the lowest paid version, it works on that one, if I remember correctly. Thank you. Um, another um, request would be, could you repeat um, how the integration updates first degree contact details with Pipedrive? Yes, of course. So um, it's a good, a good point. So what happens is that DuckSoup um, the way that the API works is, is that DuckSoup listens out for new connections and incoming messages. So we have this, this functionality, which we call the message bridge, which sits there ticking away in the background and periodically checking your regular LinkedIn mailbox, your sales navigator mailbox, and also your new connections. So if I just go to my DuckSoup options here a second, and open this one up, and I go to this connect tab here, we can see here with this message bridge functionality here, which is checking my regular mailbox every 20 minutes, and then 20 minutes later it checks my sales navigator mailbox, and 20 minutes later it checks for first new first degree connections. When it finds new connection, it would then um, queue up an auto visit to that new connection. Um, if that's the, the option that I've got enabled, um, it would queue up an auto visit to that profile, and then that profile would then appear in my CRM. So if I just go back to my CRM, settings here i'm only wanting connected profiles so i only want first degree connections in there and here um update contact after connecting if that was if that if that wasn't enabled that one there then no auto visit would be created and i would have to trigger some sort of visit myself to those new connections in order for them to appear in my crm so it's yeah it's it's this mechanism here which happens in the background now the default is that this happens every 20 minutes some people like it to happen every 10 minutes so that it's a little bit more up to date um, because it goes on a cycle. So if it's 10 minutes, then actually each of these is being checked every half an hour. Um, so you can see there the timestamps that these were last checked for me. So regular mailbox was, yeah, about uh, 16 minutes ago. Um, and my sales navigator and my connections were checked uh, early this afternoon when I was uh, preparing for the webinar. Um, so very shortly, it's going to check another one. And it does that in the background of your, of your, of your Chrome uh, browser. It'll open a new tab in the background check for messages or check for connections and then queue up the appropriate activity in the same way that the campaigns do that as well. Um, if you enroll somebody into a campaign and they become a first degree connection, it queues up those, those follow up messages accordingly there. So that's the mechanism that happens in the background with regards to the, uh, the message bridge and making sure those first degree, only those, those new first degree connections appear in your, in your CRM. So if you want to get all of your existing um, first degree connections into your CRM, you would need to visit them in order to get them in there. And the way to do that would be to go to this page here and carry out your, your auto visits. Or what I would re probably recommend do is that you do them maybe in, in batches, depending on how big your um, your um, uh, network is. So say, for example, you go and do a, a, a keyword search, for example, in regular LinkedIn or in Sales Navigator, you do a people search, and then you filter it by just first degree connections. Let's do that a second. So here I've got I've got nearly 700 people who are marketing managers in my network, and I could say right, okay, just go and uh, duck soup, just go and visit those profiles. And as duck soup visits each of those profiles, these I've got to set it off. Uh, if, I, if I do that, as duck soup visits each of these people, they will then appear in my CRM. So while we are sitting here, what we should see is um, it will open um, a few of these uh, particular profiles. And then they should appear um, within my uh, within my CRM as it goes through the list. Let's uh, let's let it run through a second and see how they appear. Um, 
think I've got it set on a on a random time, so I think it's not going to be that quick, but uh, hopefully we'll see now. Yes, yeah, so it's opening the first profile there on the list. It's gathering the data from that as it would do normally during an auto visit. I've got all of my other um, automation uh, turned off. I'm not doing anything else like sending messages or anything like that. If we look at my DuckSoup options here, I've got all of this turned off, um, all my other options there. Um, so in a second, once it's finished opening this particular profile, we'll go back to Pipedrive and we should see the details of this individual within uh, within Pipedrive. Hopefully, let's uh, let's have a look and make sure that it's actually appeared. This is where we need a drum roll, isn't it? We need some sound effects, Jim. Any second now. And there we go. It's not appeared. Let's just refresh this a second. Maybe it did. Yeah, Sing Charles, that was the. No. Nah. Well, it should appear here. Um, I think I had it all turned on, didn't I? Yes, I have got it all in enabled. Um, what was her name again? Uh, let's see if we can find her. There we are. She's there. So she's been brought across. Um, you can see that the uh, that's a new a new uh, contact there. So um, yeah, she actually was there. Just I incorrectly sorted it. So. Uh, there we go. But yeah, now as DuckSoup goes through and visits these first degree connections, they will then appear in my in my CRM. We'll leave that running while I do any other questions. Jin, anything else? Yes, we have uh, quite a few. Um, we have one um, uh, question on how to avoid double creation when DuckSoup uh, creates people in Pipedrive. Uh, so, for example, um, they use drop contact and it never recognizes existing profiles, so it creates doubles. Yeah, that's a that's a tricky one, and that's what I say about cleansing your data. Um, the, the the lookup that DuckSoup uses, um, it does its best to try and match up, but the actual um, the actual lookup that it uses is the um, uh, let me try and find. It actually looks at the um, the LinkedIn ID here, so that's that's the the the, the data that DuckSoup primarily uses here to uh, to to look for unique records. And it does also look at uh, other other fields as well, but that's the primary one which uh, is is the most reliable that we have. It's a unique identifier that we are able to use. Come straight out of LinkedIn. So as long as you can get that LinkedIn ID populated, then you you will not see uh, duplicates. Um, it's unfortunately just yeah during that 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 initial uh, setup stage that you end up with those those duplicates. Unfortunately, um, yeah. Um, it's something that we, uh, we we're constantly trying to refine and, and improve, um, but uh, yeah, it's it's still less than precise in some in some ways. But uh, yeah, uh, at least with that um, uh, with that unique identifier, the LinkedIn ID, and as you can see here, there while I've been talking, we can see Sonia and this ne next person here have, have appeared. Um, there we are. They're, they're appearing here from these these views that I'm carrying out. So yeah. Um, Avoiding duplicates is difficult, especially when you're building data. Um, I personally haven't used it with drop contacts, uh, so maybe that's something I will have a, a little bit more of a look into to see if there is a specific underlying issue there. But uh, yeah, that's the situation at the moment. Thank you. We have quite a few uh, people asking, can you reply to LinkedIn messages inside uh, of Pipedrive? I know that you demoed it, but could you uh, show it again, how to message people uh, from yes. Pipedrive? Yes, thank so you. So if somebody messages me in Pipedrive, let's, um, well, let's, uh, oh yeah, I'm there already. Uh, let's go to, for example, uh, yourself, Jin. So here I can see that I've got a, an incoming message from Jin perhaps here is uh, various uh, messages here. I can now message Jin directly from here. I can hit send message and I could say, yeah, uh, and I just press OK there. Now I think I have my, my blacklisted option enabled, so I'm going to turn that one off because I want to make sure that this does go through. There we go. I've now replied to 
to Jin. There we are. And if I look at that, there's a message being queued, and I go to my queued activity here. Um, let's go down here. You should see here. I didn't. Oh, there it is. It was there. Huh. It's at the top. There we go. There's my message to to yourself, Jin, to uh, to send you uh, to send you that message, and that will get sent very shortly. Um, so yeah, I can then reply to to messages as they come in um, from uh, from LinkedIn. So yeah, I would see there's there's a couple of different ways. So because you you would see a, a, an an activity, a new activity for an incoming message. So here, um, let's just open one of these. Wait for this to load. There we are. So that one at the top. There's a message from somebody. So I could then go into this person and then um, click on the message, um, and then uh, I could go. To, I could I could go straight to view in LinkedIn, or I could go to this individual's um, uh, information here within um, PipeDrive and then send them a direct message from here. So so that's how you can do that. You can yeah you can go straight to the message here in LinkedIn. So you have that opportunity there, or you can go to their contact details here in, in their contact information here in PipeDrive and send a direct message as I just did, as I just showed you there with uh, with regards to uh, Jin. There, that one there. I'm now going to delete that because I don't want to send that message to you. <laughs> it's easy as that. Okay, next question. That's it. We don't have any further questions. Cool. Well, just to yeah. prove that it's working still. Um, you see here that we're still visiting some pro profiles on this particular page here. And if I just refresh this page, we should see a few more of those uh, marketing managers appearing here in my, my CRM. So now any messages that I get from those people, they will also go against their, their contact information here. So we are, I've got a few here that have come in while we've been talking, I think from Sonia and upwards. Um, so all of those people, their details are now sitting in my CRM. If I get a message from them in, in, in LinkedIn, then I will have that information here, it can be shared with my team and we can follow up accordingly. And all of their contact details come straight out of LinkedIn there as well. Um, cool, uh, let's go back to here. Quick reminder of in two weeks time. Yeah, starter versus pro versus um, turbo, which is the right plan for you with, with DuckSoup. Um, and uh, a quick reminder, you can still book booster and tech calls. Um, with myself and the team, um, boosters to get you going, get you, get you started and, and, and familiarizing yourself with uh, with DuckSoup and, and LinkedIn. A tech session is, is more about um, building maybe maybe your own integration with uh, with Zapier or, or Make um, or helping you with your with your PipeDrive or HubSpot integration, making sure that you've got the right data coming into the right place, um, that kind of stuff, or working through your process to make sure that's all aligned and correct and streamlined, et cetera. That's everything from me for today. I will sign off and uh, wish you a very fine rest of the week and speak to you in two weeks time. Thank you everyone for joining. And if you have any further questions, please uh, go to our website and uh, message us uh, or email us. Thank you so much for joining and see you next time.